Hey guys, it's Dan here with Straight Up Tech again. So I'm sure many of you have heard about the Ethereum craze going on right now, and maybe you've either been impacted by this by either going out to purchase a new graphics card for your machine, or you've just been bombarded by tweets and, and news feeds about Ethereum and what it is. Some of you maybe even have purchased a graphics card in the past year, and are now able to resell your graphics card for more than what you paid for it then. So what I'm gonna talk about in this video today is about what is Ethereum and how can you get started, especially if you have a GTX 1070 graphics card already on hand that you may have purchased in the past year or since the release, and maybe you wanna get started yourself. So keep watching. So I'm going to get into some of the technical details here on a high level about Ethereum. I myself am not a total expert on this, so please do some research of your own. And as a disclaimer, anything we're talking about today is solely up to you to make sure you do your own research and understand of what this might cost you. Also, what your real rate of return might be on your investment as well. So what is Ethereum? Well, Ethereum is an open source software platform based on the blockchain. You may have first heard about blockchain through Bitcoin when it first released. Blockchain is a decentralized database that uses the network of the people that is using it as the source of truth for the database. This means that the nodes on the network are continually reconciling that database and ensuring its integrity. Ethereum is causing a new wave itself because it's trying to form a new wave of doing transaction-based books and records keeping. Um, so things such as financial transactions or any transactions um, that requires money exchanging hands, these transactions typically have been placed on an exchange through a highly regulated centralized system. But with this decentralized system to it, it's a lot harder for hackers to fool and game the system. Why is this important? Because of the decentralized functionality of the Ethereum system, no one single person owns it. And no one single person owns the monetary gain produced by it. Each person that wants to connect to this network and provide their computing power or sell their computing power may do so in return of ether, which is also known as gas, in the form of a cryptocurrency in return for that transaction being hashed. So the hashing is the verification of that transaction on the network uh, that was processed. So now you may be wondering what is Ether, uh, also known as I mentioned gas. So the entire network works off of Ether as sort of a cryptocurrency or a current digital uh, currency for the system. Now Ether can be converted into uh, the currency of choice. You can convert this into Bitcoin or you can sell and convert back into your native country's currency and get some sort of value back out of it. So next what I want to do is step into how you can start mining yourself. And I've got a GTX 1070 graphics card already installed on my machine over here. And I bought this last year when I built my system brand new. So when I bought this machine, I didn't have any intention to do any mining, but since the initial craze here within the last several months, I wanted to find out what this really is, what I can do, and maybe see if I can make some money out of it. And so in a future video, after I've let this run for a while, I'm going to come back to you guys and let you know uh, some of my story and uh, walk you through some of my thoughts on it after I've completed that mission. So I've downloaded an application called the Claymore Miner. Claymore Miner has good compatibility with the NVIDIA graphics cards. A lot of the cards out there 
that are well suited for this are all the AMD series cards. So you red fans out there can really enjoy the benefits of mining Ethereum with your graphics card just because those graphics cards have a better hash rate that they can produce which ultimately provide you more ether in return for your computational power. They're a lot more efficient on the power that makes them really great beyond the Nvidia cards as well. So the next thing you want to do is choose a really reliable pool to join in order to start mining. What that means is you can join a what is called a pool that allows you to connect to these stratum servers and verify your transactions with the group. These are giving you jobs, giving the rest of the groups uh, or the nodes out there connected jobs in order to hash. And again, by doing providing your hashing power, you're receiving Ether in return. Once you get Claymore downloaded, what you're going to do is unzip the file and you're going to have a few things to pay attention to within that file. There is a bat file or a batch file. This is a Windows batch file that calls up the Claymore miner as well as provides it several startup commands and configurations. Also within there is a text file called an ethpool text file. That ethpool text file gives you the ability to control what your failover pools are or pool stratum servers are. As well as you want to pass it in your wallet ID and your worker ID especially if you've got several machines doing ether mining. All right, so I've already got my miner pre-configured here and um, I've been running this for a while, but I'm gonna show you what the stock speeds of the 1070 GTX 1070 are and uh, let you see what those look like. But then after I, after I add in some overclocks, you'll be able to see how that much that improved the millihash capability that this graphics card will do. So I'm gonna go ahead and start up the miner. And this has all my configurations set up in it. This has my wallet ID and everything else, my pools, and my ePool server. Uh, my ePools file is set up as well. So be sure and don't forget to set up the default um, pool, but also come into but also come into your ePools file and set up all of your uh, different pools you, you want to connect to as well. And again, you can get all those settings uh, from right here in order to set uh, all those stratum servers up. So I started up the Precision OC tool and now you can see then I'm just set at stock settings. I clicked the default here and that set me back to stock settings. So if we come back to our Claymore miner, we're showing 23.9 millihash a second. So that's okay, but um, we can tweak this thing quite a bit in order to lower the power consumption, um, which is the most important thing out of this. You don't want to be ramping up your power to the max because you're just wasting hashing power there or you're wasting um, your power bill or your utility bill. The other thing is you want to make sure that you're increasing your memory clock and the reason for that is your memory clock um, by increasing that you're giving more memory speed to the Claymore miner itself and Claymore runs and Ethereum is all hashed within memory on the GPU itself or or the graphics card itself not the GPU but the graphics card so here if we go ahead and start tweaking this what I'm gonna do is I've got some settings that I've already set up and uh, may, er, I've already got some settings that I've found out that work really well um, not only to keep my temps low, but also keep my memory clock up there as high as I can get it without crashing. So I'm going to turn those configurations on 
and then I'm going to talk about those next. So one thing here is I need to make sure my fan curves are tweaked a little bit because I've got those a little too high. Um, I don't want my fans ramped up quite this high, uh, mainly because um, they're not going to they're not going to be needed um, to be nearly this this uh, aggressive. So it's going to keep my fan cur fans not overworking themselves, mainly because that uh, the mem clock um, settings I've got here, I've got my GPU clock set way down as low as I can get it. And then my mem clock up is up here at 500. Now I've gotten upwards of 600 with it, with uh, running somewhat stable. But I'm going to go ahead and bump this up to 550 and um, see where we're at with Claymore as well. So after you make those setting changes, it's going to reconfigure and reset up the miner. So it looks like it's disconnected and then it's going to pull all that back down again. So here, if we stop and look, we are now at 27.06 or 27.066 millihash. And prior to this, at stock, we were at 23. So therefore, we've already gained um, a good amount. And what I know is I can actually get this thing up to about 30 um, at tops and keep running stable. So we're bouncing around. And that's what will happen. You'll bounce around from 26 to 27 probably right now. But I'm going to go ahead and tweak this upwards um, to get up to 65 or 600 um, megahertz. All right. The other thing you can do to check your statistics if you're running and don't, don't see them, you can always hit the S key. That's going to pull up your latest statistics show you some other things there as well with your current uh, ether share target and everything else. One thing I'm going to do is switch over to one of the other pool servers and see if I get a little bit better rate as well. Occasionally um, I'll get a little bit better connectivity to one of those other servers and I'll have better, a better millihash um, number there I can shoot for. One last thing is I want to turn this voltage down as well to about 65%. Uh, so that's going to lower my voltage that's allowed on this card and actually increase my millihash just as ever so slightly. Yeah, so majority of the NVIDIA graphics cards, you can typically set your GPU clock all the way down like I've done here. And then as well as the um, mem clock itself get upwards of 600. I could probably even get this up to 625 and potentially stay stable. And so we're going to try that right now and see, see what we get. So it looks like we bumped up just a little bit um, or bumped back more where we were. But again not not affecting it too much um, beyond where we were when, after we first overclocked it. So really up to you guys to play around with these settings to see what you can really get. Um, sometimes it just depends on the time of day and other, other factors that go into how much millihash you're going to get. But again, I've seen upwards of 3032 with mine um, by simply overclocking it. So just be mindful of your temperatures and keeping those in check, as well as that you don't have any crashes or anything else. Again, please do, I, I can't stress this enough, guys, please do plenty of research about Ethereum itself. Also do overclocking research and figure out really what works for you guys best or what works best for you guys, what risks you want to take on your own because um, A, 
you with ethereum that price volatility is so high right now that you could experience a market crash and it may never recover and if it does that is not on me that's on you guys so um, take this at your own risk as well as the overclocking please be mindful that overclocking could void your warranties and or render your card useless so please be mindful of that and own that uh, yourself because I do not take any responsibility if you guys um, decide to overvolt your graphics card way way too much and uh, or don't keep your fan curves in check and burn your card up so I hope you found this video informative and enjoyed watching me do this um, if you guys want to get this set up for yourself, go check out the links in the description down below. Please also remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video. If you want to see more of this content, as well as have any questions about Ethereum mining or maybe overclocking, please leave those in the comment section down below. But until next time, guys, stay safe, and we will catch you on the next video.